Okay, so we're restarting here after our little break, session six. Uh, it's going to be part two of session six. And uh, yeah, we left off here on the uh, the ocean, and the crab was asking you guys if you could uh, free the spirit that's trapped in the cave over there. And uh, that's where we left off. And what are you guys going to do? Wait for me to get back up. <laughs> uh, I think we'd come back up now we done that and then we'd uh, I think we're heading straight for that cave aren't we what that crab say if it, crabs, it fucking said anything the crab wants to help us get some items in, re in return of a favor oh how generous what's the favor we're gonna have to clear out that cave of um, a spirit that is trapped in the cave uh, it's uh, Mariel her name is I think and she needs to be laid to rest. She free her. Yep. I am sure we can find some bones lay around somewhere. We'll right. salt them and burn them. That's the proper way to do it, right? But where's the treasure? The oh. treasure is further up, uh, past the sharks, and the big <laughs> giant shark, and uh, the harpies. I'm gonna pull out my necklace, which has a shark tooth on it. This is not my first time, lads. Well, that's that's good to know. And Verna speaks up, and she's just like, "Yeah, the crab said that he's gonna get us something really good if we get this uh, spirit thing dealt with." Didn't go into any detail, but uh, guys, I, 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 I told you this is it. This is the place. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah, we get sixty percent of that one thing. What? What? what, uh, what? Yep. Uh, <laughs> I guess so. I would rather deal with one spirit than take it and dip into shark infested waters. Yeah, we're gonna have fun. We can still um, explore and try and find more stuff ourselves. Of course. I suppose we better take care of that. Mariel. Um, yeah, I typed the rest. name into the chat there. It's M I R A A L. I'm not actually sure oh. how to pronounce that. Morel. 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 That's how I pronounce is it. that a little mermaid reference? Under the, this whole quest is a fucking little mermaid quest. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm sorry to realize that. Under the sea. Alright, so you guys uh, heading up? Yep. Alright, well, so what concerned. kind of... Yeah, just arrange yourselves in whatever order you're going to be walking in. Alright, so you get There's about... This, uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, Oz is the most tanky now. But he should go in the front. He has, like, slightly more HP than I do. <laughs> I'm okay. leaving Donna Valor at the back. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you guys get up around this corner, and you can start to see further down in the cave now. I'm going to say you can see probably about that much. And, yeah, you see Oof. this uh, creature that is kind of drifting around, actually like not staying in one place and as you as you observe uh as you observe this being this this entity um you can tell you can tell it's a it's a banshee and it manifests itself with these like ghostly elf gills actually and it has uh, webbed hands. You can notice as it's as it's like undulating around in this little cave thing. And the odd thing is the way they're moving. It looks like they're underwater, but they're not. But the way they're drifting about and the hair is moving, it it would appear as though they're actually underwater. And it wears these um, like spectral garments, and they sway. They sway around as if underwater. And is, she, go ahead. Is it just the one, or is it? Yeah, it's just this one creature that you oh. see, and and as she takes notice of you, she kind of you know swim sways over in front of you, and and if you weren't mistaken, you would think she looked depressed, but she stops you in your path and says, "Who are you?" Um, did I saw like any? Anything else in this like little, you know, cubby hole over here? Uh, it's not too much. Um, as you climbed up, it was about a seven foot high tunnel, 
and it's got a uh, like a 30 foot tall natural pillar of rocks and there's you know obviously dampness all over the place from the uh, from the ocean and the the entrance um, or rather it's a like an eight foot high cave encrusted with like lichen and and um, you know connected to the tunnel it continues out in this direction but you don't see anything in terms of um, items or uh, creatures or anything else. You just see this this banshee that seems like they're somehow trapped underwater, but they're not. And like I said, she just kind of swims towards you guys in a, in a sense. And what are you guys doing? Yeah, I'll I, put my crossbow out. I oh, put see. my hand on my <clears throat> holy symbol and I just said, we are here to help you move on to the other side. And I'll say, you are Mirel, aren't you? And she looks at you and almost as if getting ready to cry, says, yes, I'm Mirel. Who are you other than people who are supposed to help me? We're just a bunch of travelers um and we heard you you were you needed help so i do i do i can't leave this place i'm trapped here how can we help you i need this shell that was taken from me and it keeps me trapped in this place I'm not actually what you see. I'm something else. But I can't leave more than a few feet from this place. It's like there's a barrier that keeps me trapped in here. And... But if I can have my shell, I can leave. It will free my spirit. I know it. Do you know where the shell is? I don't know exactly where it is. I just know it's out of reach. I know it's close by. I can feel it. And she sort of like almost swims around in the other direction and in a sense points towards the uh, that green pulsating thing that you guys saw uh, and like that heartbeat that you heard, that thump thump. She kind of points up that way. She's like, I know so it's up so there. Like Somewhere down here. Uh, yeah, like up in this area. Like, yeah. Okay, uh, guys, I think we need to go ahead and try and find the oh. shell. We were going to head to that, that lighthouse anyway, so must as well. I will let you pass if you can get the shell for me. Otherwise, yeah. I refuse to let you pass. We will get the shell for you. Um, is there anything you could do in return? Not kill you. That sounds good. That sounds good, guys. I don't want to be here. Been trapped here for... I don't even know how long. Do you know who did this to you? I think she knows. Let me check. Moesco. Let's go. Let me type his name. She says, Moesco has taken my essence and trapped it in that shell. And, and it's, Moesco. Uh, Is this Moesco still here? I feel his presence. I feel, I feel my essence trapped and capt uh, captured by him. What is, what is he? Yeah, I was going to say, what is he? <laughs> Moesco is a... is a, a half-orc creature of some kind and... don't know precisely, but he guards that lighthouse and I think that he purposely lures ships in using that green light and when the ships wreck into the the side he takes their treasures and 
I assume, why else would he be up there? But he's captured my essence. And I cannot leave this place. I suppose we need to take my skull out. Uh, well, he just... probably has a shell. Yep. I'm fine with killing a, another orc. I'll bet they have one. Yeah, I bet, um, what's the name? Inverna's eyes are lighting up. <laughs> yeah, the mention of treasure or anything of the sort, she's, yeah. And the fact that it's in a uh, half orc. <laughs> yeah. And, the uh, side, he chose to go with his evil side. Shame. Donabella yeah. grabs onto your, like, sleeve of whatever, whatever you have there, Xandro, and, and she's just like, do, do you think we can do this, or are, are we biting off more than we can chew again? Of course we can do it. There's honor we can't handle. That's but what we, we said about the young cakes. Yeah, I was going to say, we, bet, we need to be aware this guy is probably a magic user, so... Yeah. To be able to do what he's done. A crossbow bolt to the head. No magic can heal that. Well, yep. I do have a uh, spell that might that'll be able to protect one of us at least. Morale, she uh, drifts back over to this way and she says, "If you're going to do this, be on with it. I'm. I need to get out of here." Okay, hopefully see you soon. Yeah, okay. before we leave, I just sort of, like, uh, look over to Donabella. Just say, look, nothing's going to happen to you while I'm here. All right? I trust you, Sandro. I trust... I trust all of you. I gave her a smile, and then head off. Yep. I hope today's not my day. Oh, don't you start speaking like him. I've already got enough of just one of them. Oh, no. uh, yes. I forgot to remind you that it might be your day today. Please Damn. don't, because that's what happened last time. It, poor old queen. Fine. It will not be our day today. Uh, no, I'll be next week day because it is a walk. It's, it'll be our day to get treasure. Oh, yes. Treasure. All right. So yeah, as you guys are uh, moving farther up the uh, path here, you can, you know, the, the more of the cliffside starts to reveal itself, and you can see how the path continues forward and and winds its way up. <laughs> There's about a uh, how high up is this? Uh, doesn't really go into it, I don't think. But it's it's uh, you know traversable. You can get up there. There's a path. You don't have to climb the side of a cliff or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and reveal this stuff here so you can see your way up and around. <laughs> and once you get up there, you're going to be able to see like pretty much all this ocean side over here. Probably all that, probably out this way. And, um... Yeah, and once you get up here, you'll be able to see this area for sure. Cool. The trick of revealing without revealing too much. Hey. Uh, so yeah, you uh, wind your way up the uh, the area there, and eventually you get onto this uh, plateau, and right about the time that you all uh, summit this uh, cliff, so to speak, you hear this uh, screeching sound from above. I don't quite know what it sounds like, but it sounds something like that. Everybody, roll initiative. Oh, it's oh, my favorite. <laughs> oh god, I've got a World of Warcraft flashbacks. <laughs> And uh, don't forget to click your token, and I'll bring up the thing. Oh, I did. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, me and Donovan are just going to like stay back here and do fuck all. Right. Come on in, Luna. So let me bring up... Oh, me and Luna got the same. 
Mm, oh, did I not come inside? Oops. Xander, I got a five. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna roll initiative separately for each harpy. Oh, each. Let me let me click them in order. I found out how to do the uh, the hit points individually. So that's gonna be that one. Oh, look at that. And that's gonna be that one. And that's gonna be that one. And you guys can see those rolls, right? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Let me change. Do I need to edit anybody or add anybody? Nope. I just edited mine. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Is everybody accounted for? We've got the Harpies. We've got Inverna, uh, Sept, Sandro, and Donabelle. I think that's everybody. All right. So uh, let me color code these guys so I know which harpy is which. I'm just going order red, blue, and green. I wish it would color code them on the uh, turn order thing as well. I know, that would be cool. So I'm actually going to go ahead and open the notepad thing just so I can keep track of who is who. So the one that so init 21 is red and then init 20 no 9 is blue and then init 20 is green okay that's how I'll keep track of them all right so yeah uh, you guys get to the top of this hill and these uh, harpy things that you pretty well know what they are just because you were kind of warned in advance by the crab that that these things are up here and the uh, first one comes swooping down from above and let's see and it's gonna fly towards uh you sep because you're closest let's see how close it can get to you One second Yep, it can get all the way over to you. So, so yeah, it flies over here and uh, takes a like a, like it claws at you with its claws and and probably misses. Yeah, so it tells me that's the best. Yeah, I would assume so. So yeah, it sees you guys coming, but it comes down and doesn't uh, really land a good punch on you with its claws. But no sooner than uh, that one goes away than does this other harpy over here kind of does the same thing, sweeps down from above. And I'm going to say since it's flying, it can probably get to this point and it's going to take a claw attack at Inverna. 19. Assume that hits. Oh, that hits. All right. So... Don't fucking die on your first trip. <laughs> Eight slashing. Okay. And that's uh, actually, actually, that's its first attack. So um, it actually has two attacks, so my bad. So the, that was its first attack, so I actually have to attack you again, Sep. But first I'll deal with the uh, Inverna. So as it sweeps down and kind of perches itself there on the side of that cliff and reaches out with its claws, it makes contact with Inverna. And then kind of seemingly out of nowhere, comes around with its other hand and swings with the club. Sixteen that hits unfortunately. Sixteen is AC. Two bludgeoning. Okay, thank God it's only two. <laughs> Alright. And then uh, just to backtrack here to fix my mistake from earlier, the red harp the, the harpy marked red also attacks you sept with the uh, club. Just to be fair. Oh yeah that does a definite hit and that's a two, I believe. Yeah, because the two plus three, that's only if it's the critical. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Oh, Jesus. So that's that one. So Inverna is up, and uh, yeah, show us what she's got, Oz. So she's going to attack uh, Mr. Green, and she's going to use her 
long sword. Can she do it? With, how do I do it if I do it two handed? I think I set up a separate uh, attack for two handed. I think. I think I did. I think I put in two. No, he's just got the one. I think. Okay. Usually, like at least on my own character sheets, I'll put in like long sword with uh, one handed, long sword two handed. So I guess. Uh, so I should I just roll um, to see if he hits first, and then we we can add the yeah. damage. So I'll. Uh, Oops. That is a hit. So 12 hits? 12 okay. hits. And so, how do I do the damage on this? Because if it's on um, 1, uh, it just says so on there, uh, 1d8 plus 3. So, what what you can do... Um, do a 1d10 plus 3? You could add in another longsword, like uh, like longsword and then in parentheses two-handed and then just put in... that. At least that's how I do it. I don't know if Sept or Xander has got a better way. Like I'll just I'll just add a second weapon basically, and then what if I'm gonna do like long sword one handed? I'll use the the one long sword, and if I'm gonna do long sword two handed, and then I'll click yeah, on. Yeah, that's that's what I do. So okay, uh, let me just do this. <laughs> I'm a new about this. Oh, it's not um, it's not coming on the sheet. You should be able to edit it. It's not showing up. When I add it, it doesn't add on to the sheet. Could be lagging. Let me try to set it up really quick. Alright, so... Oh, I see it editing now. Because there's a... There's a third box there. So yeah. if I click on that thing, I'm going to do, for example, long sword. And then in parentheses, I'll put two-handed. And then... um. I don't know what it is off the top of my head when it's two-handed. 1d10. 1d10. Okay. Uh, so is this plus three? It should do the plus three automatically. It looks like it does. So, okay, sweet. see if that goes. So, oops. Oh, darn. I've, I rolled it again, haven't I? I meant to, um, meant to do the damage. Oh, that's fine. Just uh, click on the, t the damage for the two-handed one. Oh, 11 damage. Okay, so... Yeah, all right, I think that's all sorted out. And you were attacking green, right? Yes, green. All righty. So that was 11, okay. All right, so we got that sorted out. Um, all right, anything else Inverna is going to do? Inverna, she can't... Can she move uh, along here? Sorry, let me just... Or oh, is this... Uh... Does she have to climb? I would say she could probably move um, like this. If she move, yeah. Oh, be my guess. I think that's. I think that's legal. But then she'll get opportunity attack if she from red, wouldn't she? That's probably true. She could probably move here, but between them, and that'd be about it. Hmm. Mm. I'm gonna leave her there. Or she could even back up behind Donabella. Oh, but then she's gonna come out of oh, right. range. Yep, right. Sorry. Yeah, right. Sorry. Yeah. So she's uh, <laughs> she's gonna stay there, Sorry. and then I'll, I'll take his Osmeril's turn. All right. And Osmeril is gonna attack uh, Red with his longbow. Okay. Yeah, he's going to attack Red with his longbow. Uh, sorry, get my sheet. Yeah, sorry guys, working out some kinks with the new sidekick. It yeah, cool. And that, whoa, sweet, sweet, sweet chin music. <laughs> um, That's a natural 20, so... It's not green. I don't see anything green. Oh, it's, it's, on mine, it comes, it's natural 20. I got 27. So that... Okay. Oh, for me it said you got sixteen. It says oh. you got twenty-one on my screen. Yeah, for on me I see, I see. Yeah, I got twenty-one, but you rolled a sixteen apparently. I got twenty-seven on my. Um... What the fuck? <laughs> no, no. If you sc scroll down, it says the. But long then one. it still has the plus one. It still makes you roll doubles. I don't understand what's happening here. 
Roll 20. So when I roll the attack, it's 10 plus 1 piercing damage, which is uh, rubbish. For an, uh... Yeah, I don't see any of these numbers on the screen. I you see... can't see the numbers. Can I... Let me see if I can screenshot... Uh, can I do a... Let me see if I do a screenshot. How do you do a screenshot? You can use Windows snipping tool. Just like... Print screen. Or print, print screen. screen. Yeah. Sorry, just give me a minute. I'll, uh, I'll send it to you. Yeah, I think what I'm looking at is still everything from, uh, uh, what's her name? Inverna. I've got to find my screenshot now. Oh, God. Uh, Sep disappeared somehow. Sep disappeared? I saw you disappear, but I see you're back now, at least on my screen. No, like, his, my token's gone. Oh, well, that's weird. I see your token. I also see your token. I just moved your token. I just moved it back. I, I don't see it for some reason. Um, okay, I'm, that's weird. I'm, shall I, I'm just gonna put the um, screenshot in the Discord. Okay, that's fine. The only thing that's really happening on my end right. is I so can't like see the vernons. Why isn't it pasting? Just oh, drag and drop goodness. it in. Jeez, this plane is being uh, an idiot now. Come on, I'll have to click it again now. <laughs> Copy. Oh, oh, there you go. I mean, I trust your numbers, so if you just want to re-click everything so it appears on the screen, and I'll just use whatever number you got. Wait, I'll you just... know what? If I do it this way, sorry. Where's me? Technology. There. Here we go. I had to drag enough? and drop it because it wouldn't do it the other okay. way. All right, let me click on this. Okay, yeah, I don't see any of that. The last thing I see is the 11 slashing, and then I... Okay, see, I see the 10 plus 1 piercing on my screen. I just don't see that 27, so that's super weird. Yeah, I also don't see the 27. I can see that, and I can see Xandro saying yes. Yeah. But uh, let me just type something, see if I... I'll just say, hello, and see if you guys can yeah, see. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. I see that. So, That's so weird. What the yeah. hell? What anyway, you, you got a legit uh, tw uh, natural 20. I see it. It's uh, legit. I see the screenshot. But unfortunately, the damage was so low because he's 21 with the with the crit, <laughs> the crit as well. So you did Plus, 11, right? Sorry, 11 damage. Sorry. Yeah, okay. All right. 10, 10 plus 1. And you were attacking red. Red, yeah. Okay. So let's uh, make that modification. So that's going to be there. Okay, so... And Oz is going to step back a bit, so gives someone else a chance to either go past or... No, nah, it's definitely on me. <laughs> okay, you can't stop on Xandro Square, you oh, have to... So was he on Xandro there? Sorry. I'm here. Yeah. I thought you were there. You can <laughs> go behind Donabella. Uh, you I might be able to stand there in the... Uh, I'd, I'd yeah. say you can stand there. Yeah, I'll move back there. All right. Sept. All right. So, red's damaged... Well, Red yeah. and uh, green are both damaged. Blue's untouched. All right. Uh, yeah, both got same damage as well. <laughs> and they all have different all hit right. points. I rolled for their hit points separately. So oh, they're... sweet, sweet, sweet. I'm gonna. Uh, I'll try to be a little conservative with my spells. I will cast. Sacred Flame, or actually, would you allow me to hold a bonus action? You know, to hold it, hold the bonus action to react later on. Is that something you can do? I mean, I know you can hold an action, right? But I'm not sure if you'll let me hold a spell as a bonus action. Somehow that uh, seems not like a real thing to me, but I could be wrong. What's the rules as written? I have no idea, to be honest, myself. Normally, a holding action is to hold the action. Yeah. Like, the entire oh, thing, okay. isn't it? Normally, it doesn't go on the oh, okay. bonus actions. Okay, you know what? In that case, I'm just gonna... I'll just try to whack red with the wounds. Uh, 23. Boy, yeah, it's a super hit. Well, it's a hit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, 17 oh, wow. necrotic. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you hit this, uh, the red one, right? <coughs> yeah. 
Ouch. Sorry, yeah. I just hit my toe. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, that's uh, two bludgeoning damage. Uh, to your toe. <laughs> uh, oh no, how come you got me? <laughs> so yeah, as you uh, reach out and like touch this harpy, you can just like see bits and pieces of its skin like flaking off and it is extremely hurt, but still still up and mad. All right. Um, in that case, I'm I'm done. I'll okay. just stay there. Or actually, I'll, I'll move a little bit. That's it. All right. So the uh, the blue harpy up here sees uh, all this going on. Let me just do a quick check. Yeah, well within. Okay. And uh, all right, I'm going to try this. Let me figure out how this works really quick. One second. She sings. La. Oh. Man. I'm going to put this in here. Uh, this might be breaking a rule, but okay. the harpy sings a magical melody. Every humanoid and giant within 300 feet of the harpy that can hear the song, that's all of you, must succeed on a DC 11 wisdom saving throw or you're charmed until the song ends. So I guess, first of all, everybody make a DC 11 wisdom saving so, throw. So, uh, uh, elves, um, they don't... Was it a charm? Is it, we get, get advantage against charms. You're humanoid. Yeah, but... Yeah, but as there... elves, um, we get advantage on saving throws against being charmed. So, Averna, okay. uh, Oz, and oh, Zandro no. all have... Advantage. Uh oh <laughs> We all have advantage. <laughs> so, so, he's wisdom saving throw, so we do it yes. as advantage. As advantage. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, uh, the tanks are sharp. Oh, my God. Osmodel got... F well, the highest he got is five. Um, let me do for mm. Averna. Let me get Donabella as well. Donabella's... Oh, she's proficient in that as well. In Ren, oh, nice. Oh man, In Ren has got eleven, which is a fail, I think, if it matches exactly. It doesn't have to no. beat it. It's it's, it, it's you have to get eleven or more. DC eleven wisdom seven. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so In Ren is fine, but Osmodel, oh dear. Oz and Sept, right? Okay, <laughs> so Oz and Sept. Uh, let's see what happens here. So this is uh, what I get for playing a bard. You're oh, charmed. Yeah. The harpy must take a bonus action on its subsequent turns to continue its singing. It can stop anytime it wants. Uh, blah, blah, blah. While charmed, a target is incapacitated and ignore the songs of any of the other harpies. If the charmed target is more than five feet away from the harpy, which it is, the target must move on its turn toward the harpy by the most direct route trying to get within five feet of it. So while you're charmed, you have to move towards the blue harpy. Um, is that on our turns then? On your turn, yeah. Oh, God. Uh, what else? But before moving into... you, But, like, you wouldn't move into lava, necessarily? Yeah, but none, none of that's going to apply I was here. Like, but it... It doesn't avoid opportunity attacks. Oh, fuck. Right, right. <laughs> Guys. Oh, my God. I was, okay. All right. Anyway, uh, so I think that's so, but, its action. Yeah, that's its action. So it says every time it takes damage, it, we can do a saving throw to see if we get out of it. Yeah, that, I mean the block of text there is exactly like I copied it verbatim. Cool. So, so if we're going past two or three, we can always do a save. So at least we get we got a chance to try and save ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I guess what what I'll say is, as each person who is affected comes up, we'll deal with it at their turn, but. So that that's all the harpy is doing. It's just sitting there, like singing this song, and a couple of you are just like, "I love you. I want to marry you." <laughs> oh yes. Oh, that sounds nice. You're like the Zandro. kiss of the Nile. <laughs> it's Zandro, show us your stuff. Mm, feel that hole. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna move into melee range, disengage as a bonus action. Awesome. Move here. Pull up my crossbow, aim at it, and just be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> mm. No, no, I do actually wanna hit it. So I won't take my minus five this turn. There's a 13 hit. 
Zandro, why are you trying to shoot such a beautiful creature? Uh, 13 hits. She's beautiful. Nine piercing. Nine piercing to blue. All right. Let me see here. Does he have to make a was, uh, was he, um, concentration thing or whatever? He wasn't affected by the thing. No, I mean um, the, the harpy. Does the it's harpy... not a spell. It's like a, oh, okay. it's a monster ability. All right. Cool. Okay, so, uh, yeah, you uh, loose your arrow, it flies up and hits her in the side. Uh, does she get to keep singing? Let's see. I don't think it bitches anything about that. All right, let me just check here. The harpy must take a bonus action. and Okay, only during its subsequent turns it has to take a bonus action to... The song ends only if the harpy is incapacitated. So, yeah, you hit there. You, you hit the harpy and it maybe messes up one of her notes, but otherwise doesn't affect her. She's still up there. However, harpies sing. And uh, is that it? Uh, that's it for Zandra. Alrighty. Donna Bella. I don't know. She doesn't have anything that can snap people out of well, being she calmed. She could try damaging us. But would she really do that as a character, though? Donna Bella wouldn't. Uh, especially yeah. not after the Quinn incident. Yeah. Um, so for right now... Hang on, how many people can... Oh, okay. Um, what she's going to do... Since she's standing right next to Oz, she's going to cast Resistance on him. Meaning... You can add a D4... To your next saving throw. Thank you. Um, and she's gonna she's gonna say that. I think. Okay, I'm just gonna put a marker on Oz so that we remember this thing's there. All right, so she stays put, and we're back around to the top. And the uh, the red harpy is gonna take its turn, and it's not gonna move. It's just gonna stay where it's at, and uh, it's gonna take a claw at. Uh, Sept nine probably misses. Well, the, you're not mine, the other one is. And for her second attack, a club. Yeah, that's a miss. They're both a miss? Sweet. All right. Yeah, my AC is 18. Okay. okay. Yeah, so uh, this one is uh, messed up a bit by the singing of her friend and the fact that you're like all glazed over with your eyes and somehow you're able to dodge these attacks because, uh, you know, you're all mesmerized by this other harpy. So she's done, and she's going to stay put. And the uh, green is going to uh, take a stab at uh, Inverna. 14. Misses. And a club. Misses. Yeah. And this Fun. one's also all discombobulated by the, the song. She probably... Would you shut up back there? <laughs> and now uh, Inverna. God damn it. <laughs> and Inverna is going to attack Green. Let me just. Yeah, Green. And she's going to use the longsword again, two handed. Okay. Six. Oh my god, she misses. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it's a crit miss. <laughs> I think, would she uh, get advantage? Don't think so. What do you guys think? Because Zep's on the other side. With me, can't, since I'm like technically incapacitated, right. I don't think she, like, she was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you uh, completely Yeah, plus, miss. Uh, I'm not even sure if like several of the cows are friendly. Well, Hang on, didn't she save? Yes. Inverna saved. Inverna saved. Yeah. Let me double check. I think so. Say yeah, it was only got, it was only Septonaz. She got eleven, didn't she? Um, yeah, yeah, it was only Septonaz. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm not gonna be mean. I'm just gonna say you just mess this up so royally. Maybe the uh, the harpy's just a bit up out of reach, and as you take a swipe, you just hit the side of the cliff there, but nothing too traumatic happens. Okay. Uh, is, are you staying put? She's staying put. All right, Oz. You have to do something, I think. Wisdom saving throw again. 
let me see here. Every moon. So. The harpy must take a bonus action on its subsequent turns to continue singing. It can stop any time the song ends. A target, if the target charmed is more than five feet away the target. But a charmed heart can also repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns. Yes, you can repeat the saving uh, throw. It says at, at the, the end. end. Oh, darn. So, okay. So he's going to, I suppose, he'll have to move, and then at the end of it, he'll have to try and save. Oh, right, yeah, you do have to try to move uh, your so, full. So he's going to go... And he's gonna walk past. Oh, sorry, I'm moving um, in Verna. Where's her? So he's gonna go past her. Past her, Sept. Obviously, he's gonna try and go past Sept. And they get opportunity attacks? Yeah. Or you leave that range? Because he'll, he's going past, so then. Okay, so the uh, red is gonna take, and I assume they get their full attack. Yep. Okay, so red oh, sees yeah. you. Uh, but as soon as they that. attack, then he gets a chance to do a wisdom saving throw because they attacked him. Okay. Because he said on their. Um, yeah, every human. I have to read this. is so long. I have to read it like every time. Yeah. It doesn't avoid opportunity attacks, but before moving into damaging terrain, the target can also repeat the saving throw. Okay, a target that successfully saves is immune to that harpy for 24 hours. Um, so, I mean, hmm. let me put it in here again. Target that successfully saves is immune to this harp. It's, oh, fuck. <laughs> see, I don't see the thing where it says, like, you get the... Oh, no. Sorry, I, I was looking at damaging terrain. It's just the lava okay. or a pit. Sorry. Right. So it's not whether it gets attacked. Sorry. All right. So anyway, as you step past the uh, red, it goes plop. That's a miss. And it goes plop. Miss. Thank God. And then green goes plop. Damn, that's a hit. And it goes I feel like it's one attack attacks. It only they gets. Only attack, they, it don't, they don't get the ability to like do both attacks, only like one or the other. Alright, that being the case. The attack. Then I that being the case, yeah, I'll say that both of those rolls were from each harpy, not so you can okay. ignore the last one. Shoot. That seems so like the fair thing. So that it would have moved 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. So that's his full movement to that spot. Um, and now he, I suppose he, he rolls to see if he gets out of um... I does it say you have to dash to the harpy? Um, he just is on his turn to wait a minute, where's he going? Or go scroll back up. <laughs> Every human, I'd... it says if the charm target is more than five feet away from the harpy, the target must move on its turn toward the harpy by the most direct route trying to get within five feet it doesn't say dash it doesn't avoid yeah, it does. opportunity attacks it does just say move yeah mm. so right. so i can roll for my wisdom saving throw again yes it does say that a charm target can repeat the saving throw at the end of its turn yes so i get advantage because i'm an elf am i out no i'm still charmed i only you see got advantage one. oh i don't uh, 10 and a six that's weird, I only see the six. Oh, I also only see the six. But you do have resistance. Oh, yes, right. I can use that for the ten. So if I do 1d4, is it? It's a 1d4, so yeah. you it's... saved anyway. Yeah, as long as you get a that. one. Yeah, I got a one. <laughs> hey, look at that. Man, this har harpy had you really under its spell, oh. but... So, you, but uh... I don't... Do I still get... I don't get an action, because obviously my action is probably just do the wisdom saving throw, right? I think that's it, yeah, because you, yeah, you move. At, at the end, end, of, of end of the turn, so that's fine. So I'm out of it now, but... Yeah. You don't, I, I can't you don't need her, Oz. Harpies are only temporary. Yeah, and now I'm uh, immune for 24 hours, so... Yeah, Next barely. Time. Yeah, that harpy really... Oh, I'll take it out, you know. Uh, <laughs> Sept. Yep, I'm going to start walking through the harpy. All right, so you're going to take one hit. Yep. And it misses. Um, Alright. 
That'd be another hit. Does, does green get after green? Oh, actually, oh, they can't do that because they already used their reaction to attack Oz. Oh, yeah, we don't, yeah actually, that's true. Oh, okay. Because you only get it once per turn, isn't it, I think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I guess Seth is just going to walk up to his heart and just down in front of her. I love you. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Seth. This reminds me of my youth. You had oh. a youth? Oh, okay. <laughs> so now you can roll. My it. early adulthood. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Where's my Discord gone? Uh oh. Can you guys can hear me, right? Yeah. We can hear you. Can you yeah, hear us? Hear you. <laughs> yeah, but my Discord's off. I don't know how that happened. Let That's just... happened to me before. Try to alt tab. Just... Maybe yeah. maybe the window just got hidden. Like alt tab. Oh, maybe yeah. I see it. I got it up. Thank goodness. It's still there. <laughs> All right, so Sept, I think you can do the DC now, or not the DC, All but right, the saving yep. throw. Who's my save? Uh, 25. Hey. Yeah, so you get up close to this harpy, and you're like, oh, God, you're ugly. And it just oh. immediately snaps the spell. And so the uh, the blue now, I think, yep, blue. Seeing, it, uh, seeing you step up there, and I don't, I don't know actually what you say to her when you get up there and realize that the song wasn't all it was cracked up to be but uh she takes offense and it's like i'll get you swings at you with the claw and that's a miss i think pretty sure yep you're 18 and yep. the club ooh the club makes contact it does four bludgeoning okay Ow. all right so oz is uh reconnecting that's okay. We'll go ahead and carry on without him for a moment. Uh, yeah, and that's all the harpy there is going to do. So, Xandro. Hmm. Just going to move up one, aim towards red. And for this one, I am going to take a minus five to this roll. I okay. hope. <laughs> is that because this of is a the five light? hit? Is that because of the light or something? Or? It's because of my feet that I chose. I chose Sharpshooter. Okay. Uh, no, a five does not hit. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, in that Shocking. case... Oh, no. Oh, lads. Out of curiosity, would a ten... <laughs> would a ten have hit? A uh, ten does not hit. Okay, so either way, I wouldn't have fucking hit. Yeah. And I'm gonna... Stay there. Fuck it. All right. And by the way, you guys can't see the harpy's hit points, right? Nope. Okay. Because I have it set up on my side so I can see everybody's hit points, but in theory, the harpy should be invisible to you. Uh, Donna Bella. Donna Bella is... Donna Bella Fiasco. Guess gonna walk up. Uh, she's gonna cast Sacred Flame, I think. All right. See. Fuck it. Why not? Boom. So, uh, she's gonna cast it on Green. Green needs to take a Dexterity saving throw. DC, thirteen. That's a miss. Okay. Oh my God! You've hit something, Donabella. Well, oh, I'm done. so proud. Donabella. Wow. Oh, that's Whoa. my oh, wow. ten aces. Sonabella, you awesome thing. I'm just going to take another step back. Yeah, this radiant flame just appears like over top this harpy's head or something like that and just rains down and <laughs> makes uh, the maximum contact that it can for that spell. And the harpy just reels back and curses something in common because they don't. And, uh, yep. Yeah. And then the round resets, so we're back to the uh, Red Harpy, who is going to take a chomp down on Oz, because Oz is close by. Natural oh, no. 20. Oh, no. Just no. absolutely connects. This thing just, you know, as you were coming out of the spell, it just rakes across like the back of your head or something and does even more damage to that beautiful hair. No. Not gonna have any more. That fourteen. Fuck me. Oh dear. And that was just the first attack. Oh no. I think that's a miss. Uh, 
Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, definitely a miss. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so she uh, gets a really good contact on your on your back there with that first hit, but then it kind of throws her off balance a little bit. So when she comes around with the club, she just completely misses, and she stays put. And then the green harpy, standing up here on this ledge, decides it's time for a song. So she starts singing oh, yeah. out at y'all. <laughs> so everybody has to make a 11 wisdom <laughs> saving. <laughs> oh, you have advantage. Yep. Oh, oh yeah. So Xandro's good. Sept is good. Oz, Oz is good. Yes. And let me just do for Inverna. So you guys are immune to blue and green. Donabelle is good. Oh. Inverna's charmed. I can't see her role for some I reason. I can't see. That's so weird. No. She, she got a seven and eight. Okay. Damn. You, you just... might be accidentally setting the, the mm. roles to the DM directly, maybe? Oh, right. Let me actually check that on the sheet. Let me edit that. I don't think I would have done anything like that, but... Maybe because I've got both sheets up at the same time. Is it... That shouldn't matter. I've got both my sheets up. Okay. Sheet up. Fucking English. What is it? Settings, is it? Never whisper rolls. No? Let me look under core. Bio. Let me actually edit that sheet really quick. Maybe it's on here. No, it's not on there. Cancel. Okay. It, that's why I logged out to log back in to see if he fixes it. But... Okay. All right, we'll sort this out later. Because um, I know there's a thing on the sheet somewhere where it's like, GM only. Yeah, but I looked on that, but it's not, it's got never whisper rolls. But if it's GM only, surely you'd be able to see it anyway. Right. Yeah, you're right, and I don't see it. Yeah. Is it? Was, and was it? Was it her role last time that we didn't see, or was it Oz's? I think it was Oz's that it we didn't Oz's see. It was Oz last time, and I logged out, logged back in, and now yeah. so <laughs> it's moved right. on. All right, we'll sort it out later. Very strange. Uh, so, so in this round, um, she was she the only one. Seven and, yeah, seven okay. and eight. All right, so the harpy stays put. I'm pretty sure that's her entire action. Even though she has multi-attack, I think that only counts if she's doing the melee attacks, or the uh, physical attacks. The luring song, I think, just um, counts as an action. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't swear to it, but let me actually look at that really quick. Second. <coughs> uh, actions. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that just counts as the action because because it's wait a minute yeah because it specifies yeah. that her multi attacks are specifically claws and club so I'm just gonna say that the the song count is just one entire action uh so yep that harpy uh, is done and Inverna uh, I guess stays put because you're already within five feet yeah so she just you stays can make put again. So she can do a save to see if she gets out of it now. So I'll do that. Hopefully you guys can see. I don't know if you guys will be able to. 18 and 7. 18 and a 7 yet. How can we see that one and you didn't see the first one? I don't know. Twirl, roll 20. Roll 20 is playing up today. But that's the save. Yay. So All she's right, out so of it. She's out of and it. that's her turn. That's her turn. Oz. Oz is gonna, he's gonna attack, attempt to attack both red and green with his scimitars. Okay. Is it short swords or scimitars? I forgot what. Scimitars, yeah. So he's gonna t do an attack each on both of them. Like one each. Yeah, one on the first one's on red. Okay. And that is um, eleven to hit. That is a hit. Sweet. I'll do the damage first, and then. Okay. Six damage. All right, so that makes a uh, contact. And okay. red, uh, as you as you slice in and make that contact, you notice that red is really messed up. Hmm. Would I be able to finish red off, or would I have to do the green? Because I said I'd, I was going to do the. I'm going to say stick with what you said. Okay, fair enough. So then, the second uh, attack with this scimitar is for. Greeny. That's and a hit. That's a 17 to hit, and that's a 9 damage. Okay. Oops. 
Why is he rolling twice? <laughs> Nine damage. Uh, All right. So that's yeah. His, that's his turn. So as you spin around and make contact uh, with the one kind of sitting there on the side of the cliff, uh, you do pretty good damage to it, and you do notice it's it's quite oh, hurt, oh. but not nearly like red. When you made contact with red, red just looked like it was about ready to keel over and die. But oh, actually, would I get advantage on green since um, in Werner is she's um, out of uh, being charmed? Um. Yeah, I would say so. Cause even though she's just out of being, just out of being charmed, she is out. So I would say that counts as I'll advantage. Just, roll just in case he gets a, a natural twenty. Yeah. Right. Oh. Hey. Oh, oh my God! God. Oh. <laughs> what? What's with your natural twenties in this campaign so far? Sweet. Jesus. Like, right, so, holy shit! Yeah. Re roll that damage. Re roll that damage. Why can't Lorian have this luck? That's. Uh, 11 damage instead of 9 that's damage. Nice. Okay, so that's an extra... extra. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I think that's fair. Sweet. <laughs> okay. It's always worth re-rolling just in case you yeah. your... It's, uh, I mean, it's actually it's a 1 in 20 chance, but it's pretty good. Yeah, that 5% chance. Right, well, that's... that's uh, he, I was going to say Lorian's turn, but that's uh, Asmuriel's turn, so... <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just going to say... Uh, all right, Seb is gonna look up at this uh, B B and uh, this inflict wounds her. All right, and that second, and second level is wow. a massive hit. That'll be twenty-eight wow. damage. I'm 28 pretty damage. sure of that. Oh wow. Okay, so you, as you reach up and and do what you do, you see this thing just almost completely disintegrate it literally looks like if you stabbed this thing with a toothpick it would die but somehow uh, you know, if it just like if you blew HP. brad uh, bad breath in its face it would be done but it's like it's definitely not pretty anymore yeah i just look at this thing and i'm just gonna say all right you have one chance one chance to fly away but that's it Probably just vomits on you. No. Uh, all right, is that it? Uh, yeah. All right. So this uh, harpy, it's barely capable of standing at this point, just looks at you and just, with every last breath it has, just rakes you right across the face or tries to. And then as, it, this. And then as it does that. I imagine it like does a full 360 comes around with its other hand and whacks you inside. Damn. That's that's a it. And does four bludgeoning. And then it's just like it, I don't know if Harpy's like cough up blood, but if this thing can cough up blood, it's coughing up blood. And it's like <laughs> and it stays put. Xandro. Is Red the only one who hasn't sung? Yes. It's getting fucking shot. <laughs> uh, so I load up the crossbow again, aim it. Oh, and you get sneak attack. I do fucking get sneak attack. <laughs> um, I'm going to take the minus five on this one again. So does oh, an 11 hit? An 11 hits, believe it or yes! not. Yes! <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, so that is... The feat was worth it. Damn. 16 plus. How super dead is this thing? Uh, so it is 25 damage. Wow. wow. This thing is super dead. So tell us what oh. that looks like as you expertly load it, aim it, and I just take a breath. Everything goes slow motion as I pull the trigger. And it just. I imagine, like, as it's about to sing, just bam, straight into its neck. It's right, like, just through its through neck. Through the mouth. Pulls, <laughs> through the mouth. Out the other side, it just flops. So it's like this 1999 Matrix bullet time effect. It's just like the camera follows the arrow and time stops, and the camera spins around the arrow a few times. And <laughs> it's, like, it's like fucking awesome. Sniper Elite, if you've ever played that. <laughs> like, like John Woo type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Max Payne or whatever, yeah. 
I'm more familiar with the Matrix movie, but all right. Uh, you're I'm just gonna say, I I shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, this uh, is like yeah, a, I'm gonna say put like negative. Like something. an X-ray of the harpy's skull as it gets killed. <laughs> uh, and I'm sorry. Did you say you were staying there? Yeah. All right, Donna Bella fiasco. Uh, it's not much a uh, a healer can do at this point, apart from heal. Um, so there's no point in really casting resistance on anyone anymore. I don't really want to use any more spell slots. So sacred flame on green. Make that dexterity saving throw. Of she it passed. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Matrix dodge. Yeah, is her. Oh, hang on. Oh, never mind. Her uh, thing is 14. It still misses, but I need to change that, I think. Discord is using your microphone. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm just making sure everything is up. It just said Discord is using a microphone. I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. All right. To do what? So <laughs> the harpy, the green one. Uh, yeah, green one. Um, can't sing, so let me see. Does it have to do the same attack on the same person? It's not clear on that. It just as one target. I'm gonna say I don't. The way I'm reading it, I think it can attack two different targets. I think. Anybody agree or disagree with that? I think multi multi attack technically counts as. You're attacking multiple times. So I I rule it as that. Does one person multiple times. Um, no, you, you can hit anyone you want as long as they're in range. As long as they're, that's what I was thinking. So I'm gonna say that uh, the harpy like again does like this pirouette spin and rakes uh, Oz with the claws and. Um, that's a hit. In the girl. With the club. And that's a hit, damn. So this this harpy is not having it, and just feels invigorated by seeing her her companion fall. Actually, they probably so don't have enough intelligence to care about such things, but uh, so yeah, she just spins around uh, instinctively, raking you with the claws and hitting Inverna on the back of the head with the club. And okay. Otherwise, stays put. Fine. So Inverna, she's still charmed, isn't she? So didn't you come out of that? Oh, did she? Oh, she come out of it. She didn't. She didn't. She? I forgot. Yeah, yeah. yeah you came so out of it. at the end of her turn. So now she's gonna attack Green with um, the long sword. Oh, she gets advantage as well. Hehe. <laughs> so two-handed. And that's, that's a hit. Yep. Super hit. And then the damage is 12. You can see that? I can't see it, but I'll take your word for it. And that's green, 12. right? Yeah, it's 12 selection dam uh, d damage. All right. Yeah, this uh, this green harpy up here on the cliff is uh, really hurt. Uh, getting near that point where you saw red practically, uh, you know, coughing up blood, but maybe a little bit healthier than than that point, but still very, very worn down at this point. And is Inverna staying put? She's staying put. Actually, that would be with advantage too, but it doesn't matter because the first roll was the highest, so, okay. And Oz? And Oz is gonna attack green. Okay. And he's got two attacks. If he managed to take care of green, can he move and attack blue? One, two. So uh, if he if he managed to kill with the first attack, kill mm -hmm. green with the first attack, would he be able to move? Because he got his movement. Can I he think move? so. I think that's I think that's fair because you haven't used any movement yet, so you yeah. can attack, move, and then use your bonus action. Yeah. I think I think that's legit. What do you, how mm -hmm. how is it? Yeah. Okay. You use your actions in any order you like normally. Okay. Yeah, that so... seems legit. Yeah. The first attack is with advantage, so I rolled twice. So the 23 hits. Yep. And I can't see the second roll yet. 
Oh, the first one was a 13, and then the second one was 23. Okay, well, I, I I don't see the 13 for some reason. I only see the 23, but yeah, the either one hits. And that's a 7 slashing damage. Okay, so yeah, you uh, slash into green. You do not kill it, but uh, it's... Uh, it's it's hurting big time. So if I didn't kill it, I, I would finish him off. Yeah, you I did say that. I, yeah, yeah. yeah, you did so, say that. Okay. So my second attack. Did I do it twice? No, that's the first one. Eight was the first one. <laughs> which was a natural one, really. Second one's a 15. Okay. So that hits. Yeah, I see 10 and, and 15. And then I got eight slashing damage. And yeah, you uh, th between those two attacks, you manage to cut it down, and its its body just slumps down and slides off the cliff, down into the, down into this region somewhere, and it is okay. done. Okay, and then let's see, you got one, two, three. Let's see, if I move one, two, three. If I move here, would Sep get advantage? Yep. So I'll just move up, use my action, um, sorry, my movement to move up to give Sep his advantage on blue. Since I've done all my actions, I can't do anything else. Just the movement. Alright. And Sep. Alright. Um, do I feel like doing overkill right now? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a, I'm a inflict wounds it with a bandage. A twenty. Boom. That's a hit. As long as you don't roll negative damage, you're fine. A uh, fifty. Yeah, you just just <laughs> describe whatever happens as you just disintegrate yeah, this thing. I just reach up and as I say, tries to fly away from me. I just reach up, grab its leg, and you just see like this corruption like start spreading through the creature, and. And before you know it, it just like falls apart in the air. It just like flies, it, it, like dust. It just like flies away, like oh, dust in the wind. Fucking Thanos it. Yeah, I I battle snap it. Nice, nice, nice. Clear list, <laughs> and everybody's out of initiative. Sweet. Jesus, Seth. Well, I'm I, I, who I don't know is. who this who is Jesus is, but I will. Ah. I heard it somewhere. Yeah, fair enough. Well, uh, if you guys are hurt, I can do a little bit of healing for all of you, if you like, Os or... Yes, Osmiel's on 22, I think. Let me just double check. Uh, yeah. yeah, and... Um, or perhaps 20... we could uh, just take a short rest. Yeah, Inverna's on 20 and Osmiel's on 22. Yeah, I can, I can either do prayer or heal it or short rest. It's up to you guys. Do you want to do short rest? Here. Don't mind. Um, I mean, it's up to you two, honestly. Uh, I um, I need actually, to... we might not really have the time to do a short rest because more harpies might show up, so... Yeah, yeah I think I will just do the prayer healing. Do we need to come to you? Yep, get around, everybody. Had to see Kumbaya. <laughs> okay. Uh, fourteen healing, everybody. 14. Hey, sweet. The harpy spring back up. Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, why? Yeah. Gonna zero these guys out. Yeah, those harpies. They were kind of fun for some reason. Like, I thought they'd get to move around a bit more, but, you know, because they had the flight. But I guess even if they, yeah, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, this plateau that you guys are all standing on, it's, uh, you know, it spreads out quite a ways. And it's it's pretty high up above the water. Uh, so you got a pretty good breeze up here. And, you know, as you're looking around, um, you know, you, you can kind of see, let me actually do a control L thing on one of you guys so I can see what you see. Yep. Okay. You do see this like double set of doors over here. That's kind of like a remarkable thing that stands out. And obviously you can see like this corner 
spot over here and you can kind of as you look down this way you can just see like the the cave or rather the cliff wall runs right up against the uh the lighthouse so which way would you like to go so this is the main entrance and there's a gap here yep but we can't get through that gap can we i don't know if you can or not can you i mean you can try can oh. i have a look to see what's if i can see beyond that gap see what i can see sure yep so as you walk up there toward the uh the cliff edge and you take a peek around i'm gonna say um you can you can see further out into the ocean and everything at this point you can see around this wall maybe like about here and you can see over the edge of the cliff you can see more out into the ocean like this way and out here and and you can and something catches your eye down below you can see some wreckage from uh from a ship as, as you're looking around out this way mm, interesting Anything interesting over there? Wreckage. Oh, sprint over. So look at the wreckage. Um, what, there's some sort of a... Is it a window or something? Maybe we shouldn't that cross that. Is, case. Let me see, what is that? Uh, yeah, so those are windows you can see. Um, there's like a... Trying to see if there's anything about those that matter. There are windows into the building. That's from where you're at. That's about all you can see. So we want to keep away from there. Is there so anything was... visible in the shipwreck? So as you are looking down at that shipwrecked area, I'm going to say that you can see. Uh, I mean, you can see, like, uh, what might be skeletal remains from up here. Um, aside from that, you just see, like, you know, ship wreckage. But uh, it's 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 not, you're not close enough to, like, make out really good detail. Because a lot of it is sunken. Well, I guess that does go par and par with the shipwreck. Yeah. Yeah. So do we, I suppose we need to go through the door. Well, it seems like the only obvious path. Mm. Trying to see if these windows are high up or if they're low down. Um, doesn't actually seem to say, but I mean, I, I suppose you probably could climb up and get in the windows if you wanted to. Anyway, which way you, you want to go through the door? Yes. Open uh, it. It is unlocked. So you can walk in and let me reveal the area that you walk into. This one's going to be interesting because it's like right on this corner. There's another set of double doors here. I'm just trying to not reveal like what's behind it, but... But essentially, you can see these walls, and you can see all the way down here. You can see this door down here on the south wall. You can see this, Ooh. which I think is just another window, but let me look. All right, so, uh, yeah, as you uh, come into this room, this is like a what you would probably think of as like a foyer to a building of some sort it's it's empty the ceilings are about you'd guess at least uh 12 feet high maybe maybe a bit higher than that and through the uh dirty window in the south wall uh you can see even more ships uh masts uh jutting out above the water so i'll kind of reveal some of that here one second so like yeah as you're looking down through that window here you'd probably see like this maybe out a bit this way maybe some of that some more ship wreckage over this way it's a pretty dirty window and it, yes, there's not a ton you can see but you can see just more ship wreckage out in the area oh baby 
<laughs> what, what's this bit here? Is that a wall? Yeah, let me pull back some more about it. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we got one entrance here, and we got that, the, probably the main bit of the lighthouse. Uh, What's our preference, we, fellas? That's the main. Say we try to take out the uh, side areas first before we go so gun hole into the yeah, I think main part the of the. This is the side area. Yeah. I assume, because that looks like the main bit that's where the where the light would be attracting the ships or something. Okay, so Sept, it looks like you're going to open that door. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I'll open it. All right, let me see. It's it is unlocked. Okay, so yep, you don't have any problems opening that door. So I'll reveal all this stuff here. Down to here. I guess I can just pull back all this at that point. No point in having any of that there. All right. So yeah, uh -oh. as uh, as you walk into this room, read a little bit of block text here for you guys. Uh, the walls of this 15-foot-high room are adorned with frescoes that depict ships being tossed on stormy seas with a dark and terrible god looming above them and smiling. Set into the west wall is a dirty, salt-encrusted window. A stone altar with lightning bolts carved into it stands against the south wall. A metal rod descends from the ceiling above the altar, splitting in two, before it embeds itself into the stone. Hmm. Would I recognize what deity this is dedicated to? Um, yeah, do a uh, a religion check. Already? Actually, you're a cleric, aren't you? Uh, 22 or 27. And you're a cleric, so you actually don't even have to do the roll. Yeah, I, I, I literally have expertise in religion. <laughs> yeah. It, it it specifically states yeah if you're a cleric you can you just automatically know this oh um, well so let me see here I know it very well then yeah so the smiling figure depicted in the frescoes is the chaotic evil storm god Talos Talos hmm. I just look at this uh, shrine and do the others as they. Hmm. I recognize this figure. It's none other than Talos, the god of bad storms. I'm trying to oh, see if you might know something else here. I don't. I'm trying. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can tell you that's part of what you would know. But I mean, is Talos a bird? Hmm. Uh, I think in an alternate timeline, he was he a bird god or something. No, he's like the god of storms. Okay. So I think I can tell you this. I think it's fair that the, uh, yeah, the temple, like this whole place is dedicated to Talos and it's the evil god of storms. Um, never mind. That's basically what I just said. I guess they just have it repeated. They just have it repeated on the other page. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say uh, this explains why Oh. Whatever the fuck his name was. Um, Talos. Or Moesco. Yeah, Molesco. <laughs> Molesco. Is so hell bent on bringing down the ships. He's trying to honor the god. Um, is that rod removable? Uh, so, as you, uh, like, as you're looking around the room and you're looking at the altar, uh, you can see that that lightning rod, um, like the lightning rod goes up through the ceiling of this place and you can't really tell from here where it goes uh you just you just know it goes through the ceiling of whatever room you're in so it's from the altar up the ceiling right okay right fair enough i thought it was just like a five foot six foot rod well, just curious um is there like a like a small bit of debris on the floor, like a rock or something. Uh, let's see. Look here. Like just like a small rock. Throw. I mean, I would imagine that uh, a place yeah, like this I'm is gonna, gonna have. 
Yeah, I'm gonna pick up like a small rock and just throw at the raw to see if there's any reaction to it. Okay. So uh, yeah, you pick up the rock that uh, or something that's lying about and throw it. You hit the rod, and uh, nothing immediately happens that you can see. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I just realized I... I'm a club in my inventory. So I'm going to walk up and hit it with the wooden club. Just full on flack. Oh, good. I was about to touch it, but if you want to sacrifice your character instead, that's fine for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that's why I said not my rapier, because just in yeah. case any fucking electricity does run through yeah, it. Yeah, out of character, I'm sitting here, okay, this might be, you know, electrified or something. Yeah. Uh, so you're, you like, like to poke at it with your club basically oh no full on flack full like, on I'm... flack yeah. yeah uh yeah you you hit it uh but nothing uh nothing happens eh, seems dead yeah. okay oh, oh yeah, what happened to our music it's gone oh well okay let's open hey, this guys. next door if we're all done yeah, yeah. all right let's leave this alter to budget four Okay. All right. I'm going to open the next door. All right. This door. Apparently, every door in this place is unlocked. How nice. Okay. So Go you uh, open the door. Yep. These people, people have no sense of security whatsoever. And you enter in to a room that is. It's like a ledge, and it's enclosed by, you know, this two or three foot high stone retaining wall that you can you can see kind of wrapped around the edge there and uh you get the sense that this is probably where those harpies came in from they probably were perched up here and they either either heard or saw you come coming up this trail and uh once you guys get up here they launched up off this uh platform and flew over to attack you so is there a, a, a nest here uh, roll a, um, what would be investigation? I guess anybody that's coming out and, and looking around, you can all roll investigation. Oz will have a look as well. Bap. Fuck all. <laughs> roll an investigation, right? Yeah. Anybody that wants to look around out here. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Xandro, as, as you're looking around out here, just the uh, the reflection off the water or the mist of the salt here, something is just interfering with your eyes and you can't quite discern anything, anything interesting. Uh, Oz and... Uh, okay, Oz, as you, as you come out, you know, your, your vision is not quite as affected and you, you see this, you, you do see their harpy nest out there you, and... And, and you immediately notice inside the nest, there is a, um, there's a potion. <gasps> Ooh. Um, I'll go and pick it up. Okay. Do I recognize it to be anything or? I, th I guess you do. It doesn't seem to indicate here that there's anything special about identification or anything. So you recognize it as a potion of water breathing. Water breathing. Oh. Yep, and I have a card that I can give you for that. One second. Carry on for a second while I find it. Hey. Ah, fucking light. Piece of shit. Salty air. <laughs> uh, actually, oh, I'll just read it to you because I don't, I don't have it ready, so I have to cut it. Uh, but the potion of water breathing, you can breathe. Whoever drinks it, you can breathe underwater for one hour. After drinking this potion, it's a it's it appears to be this cloudy green fluid, and uh, the bottle isn't like completely airtight sealed, so it has this smell to it, which smells like um, like a jellyfish, or or rather, it smells it smells like the sea, and it has inside of it this bubble. Uh, this jellyfish-like bubble that's floating on top of it. Okay. <laughs> this may be useful. 
It's slave archaeopod. Let me see, is there one of those? Yeah, there appear, appears to only be one of those out there. Uh, I'm closing just the line. Maybe we can find some more lying around somewhere. Well. So yeah, just uh, do something to indicate that you have that, because I can cut the uh, the digital card out, but it'll take a minute to do that. So. Let me see. Can I get it in the? Ah, oh, okay. Water, portion of water bridge. I can add it on from the thingy. Alright, so where do you guys want to go from here? Um, oops, well, I suppose we just head towards the main room then. I accidentally got another Osmoril. <laughs> oh shit, there's more of him. <laughs> <laughs> do you need to delete him or do you want me to? Yeah, I can't delete him. So. Which one is he? Um, the one um, just off the cliff. Okay, I wonder how he got out there. Yeah, I was trying to click on my character sheet and he accidentally dragged it. Um, I didn't so. know you could use that spell. Oh, pull I think through. I put it in the wrong channel. I've been putting all this stuff in the wrong channel. Whoops. I'm an idiot. Potion of water breathing. Yeah, I just realized I've been putting all that stuff in the music bot channel. All right. Anyway, so, uh, yep, you guys uh, get out there. You realize that beyond that cliff is just the ocean, basically, or the water, and um, carry back on into the into that foyer room. Uh, and... Guys, mm -hmm. I'll say quietly to the guys, um, we better be ready just in case... Um... What's this Moscow face is in there? I'll pull up my rapier. I get my longbow. Well, actually, my scimitar hey. ready. I'm, I got my bolts. Hey. Hey. Yeah, rapier hey. in one hand, crossbow in the other. I'm an idiot. Okay. While you guys were still in this room, um, I, I forgot who touched the altar first. Uh, I threw a rock at it. And then I f whacked it with the club. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> let me see here. Um, all right, I'm just going to go with Sept then, because he was kind of the first one to do something to interact with it. Uh, Sept, as you... Uh, I I'm gonna. I'm just going to say, as you touched the, the altar close enough, um, you become charged with the power of the storm and you and anybody Ooh. looking at you like after you do this if you were to turn around and look at anybody they would notice that your eyes are electrified essentially like like sparkles of energy are flowing through your eyes i feel the power i feel transcendence so yeah um, my bad. i have Stop. the power of the gods at my fingertips once. He always says, Oz, um, Ozmer was saying to um, Inverna, he's always saying that stuff. And I, get, I need to give you a thing for this, one second. <laughs> he's gone mad, he has. Yeah, no, but he always says that stuff, doesn't he? <laughs> I'm overcharged. Oh no, he starts talking about how we're gonna fucking die. <laughs> yeah, and um, it's a good job he's only speaking common at the moment, otherwise. <laughs> I start speaking a bizzle. <laughs> uh, ah, now he's fucking chanting. Oh no, I spoke too soon. Sorry. Uh, is he gonna like fucking explode? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> wow. Oh Jesus. I, I start speaking in like a whole bunch of. I start speaking in like straight sentences, but each word's a different in a different language. <laughs> each word's a different. Oh wow. I'm gonna actually have to type this to you, Sep. So, everybody, give me like uh, a second while I type this out to one, him. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Okay. He just spoke uh, under common. Nine what? languages. Because uh, I don't have the thing scanned in for some reason. I like to imagine under common is just Australian English. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it fucking is. <laughs> Good on you, mate. <laughs> Let's get some Maccas after we're done here. <laughs> Tim Tams. 
Uh, I was gonna say, are you okay in Inferno? That's the one language I don't speak. <laughs> uh, don't use that. Gold locks. <laughs> there you go. This is just, I guess, knowledge that you oh, would gain. Oh, Jesus. Like, as you do oh. this, to you, this is wow. just knowledge you would gain. And uh, oh. FYI, it, it, it doesn't count if anybody else touches it, so... Fair enough. That's Everybody running to touch it. <laughs> All right. Oh, what's up? That's like the, uh, the worry, green boys. cauldron in the uh, the room we yeah. were in. Like, oh, oh, yeah, I'm going to dip my sword in now. I dip my sword in All right. <laughs> Seth's, uh, his mind finally goes back to normal. He's like, all right, guys. I have whitened at my fingertips. So uh, I think I'm ready to... I think we're ready to fight whatever's behind that door. Uh, I suppose you better go first, then. I kicked the door open. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, yep, the door's not locked, so you have no problems with it. And when you get into this room, you can see, like, around here. You can see here, obviously, here. And you can see that <coughs> door. All right, so you are, let's see here. So you enter in and it's a, it's a spiral staircase and it's innately, uh, ornately decorated as you see this like stone railing that climbs up inside the wall of this round uh, tower. And the staircase is, uh, it's about 20 feet high. All right. Osmer will whisper to um, Septon and say, should we check that room out first? Yeah, that's what I was about to suggest. Okay. And yeah, well, there's not a darn door in this place that's locked, so... So you open this door, you come in here, and basically you would recognize this at least partially because when you were standing outside, you could see through these windows into this room a bit. And one second here. So when you get in here, it's a, uh, it's a, you notice it's like it's a 15 foot high room, you know, give or take, you're ballparking it. And you can see again, those north facing windows, which you recognize, um, I think it was Oz that was uh, standing outside looking in. So you recognize this room and uh, you can see like a barnacle encrusted chair standing against the north wall. Um, or rather standing against the south wall and sitting in the chair oh dear. is a being, a creature which I have to mess about with so give me one second uh, well, I don't I don't speak Aquaman, unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> he speaks common though, doesn't he? Ooh, okay. Oh. Yeah, you see this. Oh. Okay, bad. Uh, yep. Yeah. It looks like a half orc. Oh dear. Let's see here. And yeah, he's uh he's clad in armor. And if you had to take a guess, it would you would think it was some sort of like sea creature that he slayed in order to get the armor, resembling perhaps like an octopus or something along those lines. And resting in his lap, you can see very clearly is this opalescent conch shell. Oh, that's a boy. Damn, should have placed some money on my bet. All right. Um, and I, do you guys do oh. remember about the shell, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, just making sure. For, uh, was it Miral? For what's her name, yeah. Miral, yeah. Ghosty bitch. <laughs> And he, as he sees you guys coming in, he's just like, What are you doing in here? All right. Talus sent us. <laughs> I'm Talus. Uh, fuck. Excuse me. Uh... All oh, right, never mind. He's Molesco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, pop this. 
Hang on a minute. <laughs> Sorry. Tell us, That's why it says baby DM in the lower left corner there. <laughs> I can't keep my stuff straight. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh no, what? I was just no, saying, a literal like, god. Yeah. A literal god. Damn. <laughs> I was like, god, we're in level four. TPK time. Baby DM, first adventure, first campaign. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, um, he's just curious at the moment why you're here. Uh, I would have said uh, Talisentus. Make a deception. I think it's deception. Well, I mean, if he's telling the truth. <laughs> Oops. Oh, sorry, my sheet. Give me oh wait, no, we're set by Mer Mer Mario. Oh, yeah, so I gotta roll deception. Please be a natural twenty. Oh my god! Oh, my god. <laughs> what the fuck? Can you just say, <laughs> please be a natural twenty? Natural yeah. twenty oh, in this campaign, god, like holy so shit! Sweet. And the best thing is you can see. It, so. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, he's convinced that you were sent by the storm god, and. <sighs> He's a bit taken back, and why would Talos send you here? I think he wants you to give us the treasure and stuff. Whatever artifacts are in this lighthouse, I, I speak of good authority that your god wants to wants the artifacts to be entrusted to us, including that shell you got there. He kind of looks down at the shell and is uh, st still hesitant to give it up to Usept. Um, just one second here. I don't. I don't really think that that. Is, I don't think he's supposed to just like roll over and give up here. <laughs> Natural twenty, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, that's that's the way the roll went, right? Wow. So, uh, <laughs> I was like, oh no, because I got a one. I'm deception. I was like, <laughs> let it be a nice one. Okay. Okay, okay. So, so to you, uh he's just going to uh, demand just outright, you need to get out of here now. <laughs> okay, Jesus. And uh, for what reason is my good sir? If you want to live, you will leave now. I don't know about that. He's, Emma, he stands he's up from the chair, and uh, as he stands up, he whatever he's holding on to, he just sets in the chair behind him. And he's basically doing that tough guy puffing up the chest. It's five against one, my friend. He's meant to carry the stuff for uh, for us. Him and the others are meant to carry the stuff. I'm told it's supposed to be quite a bit. And he looks at you and he says, You may leave. I don't have any quarrel with you. Once you hand the stuff over, I can leave. I'll take these guys with me. I can't do that. You all need to Step leave now. Step is just going to look at this man that... Well, we gave you a chance. And he's gonna shoot lightning at him. Okay, uh, yeah. I'll Unlimited you, power! I'll give you that as a surprise <laughs> round since, uh, um, Oz got that 20. Uh, so everybody Pretty, roll initiative. You're gonna I, fight I, this guy. I believe lightning is just a saving throw. It's not like a... It's like an area attack, not like a saving throw. It's a saving throw, not a attack roll. Did I roll? Okay. I can't see. What um, oh, all right, we'll do it. We'll do that, but we're still gonna roll initiative. Sorry. Oh so, my god, me and Donabella are on sync or in sync. That's Osmaril. Oh cool. my god, how terrible! Well, well balance is all bad, isn't it? And Universe Inver is now balanced. <laughs> in Inverna, she's better. She's done better. You want to just send the result of this roll to the turn drive, but I'll take care of it. Oh, I forgot to, uh, yeah. Add the turn, she got a, what, a 12? Yeah, it's, uh... You got 12, yeah. It's eight, it's... He has to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Um, does it, like, say what 
ability score score I'm using for the uh, for let's little... see. It's so if you want to look up on D and D Beyond or something that spell, like it usually uh... it'll just be what your spellcast modifier is. But since this is like not something that set will usually have, yeah, it, it just it just says what I wrote to you. It doesn't give anything more. So it'll just be my wisdom save then, or excuse me, it'll just be my usual spellcasting um, DC. Has a really good question. Um, let me let me just look up this spell on D and D Beyond so I can see more about it. I mean, it's not specifically the spell. It's it's the in the it should like mention like what ability score I used for the spell. No, it doesn't. It it literally just what I wrote to you. So I guess it's up to you okay, let's to decide. Um, that's why I'm just going to look up the spell and see how the spell normally works. It's usually only available to wizards or sorcerers. This is like charisma or intelligence-based class. So 100 feet is cool. School evocation. Does that help? Yeah. You know, we... Let's just say I'm just going to use my intelligence for it since it makes sense. All right, I'll go with that because just to yeah. keep things moving along, I'm sorry. I, I, I... All right, so he has to make a DC 13 saving, uh, dexterity saving throw. This is... Any fail? I need a miserable fail. Yeah. It takes 32 lightning damage. Holy wow. fuck. Awesome. And oh. I can do that two more times, guys. What the <laughs> fuck? Jeez, oh, man. These uh, these encounters sometimes they are all or nothing, aren't they? Um, hang on. You really messed him up. He's still standing. But, uh, He's still standing. Uh, okay, so, so do we all get a um, surprise attack on? Or is he just... I'm going to say just Sept, uh, just, okay, okay. just for that, mainly because I want this guy to at least get one attack. <laughs> okay. So... He is fucking last. <laughs> that is just... Yeah. Sept has just become an upper Palpatine. <laughs> so is it... Um... <laughs> yeah. So in when is turn next? Uh, yeah. So let's just 5, 10, 15, 20. So she can go here, and she can attack him... With her long oh sorry that sounds real with the long sword two handed okay and that's twenty four to hit yay yeah and I don't see it for some reason but that's all right. I'll take your word for it uh, twenty four hits twenty four hit and that's um, nine slashing damage okay so yeah you guys are just getting in the punches on this guy and then she's gonna that's it. Actually, she's that's it. She's not gonna do. It. Okay. Well, actually, no, she is. Um, let me see. Oh, she hasn't. She hasn't got it. No, that's fine. So I thought she had something there, but she hasn't. She has like that's second wind or something like that. She's got. I thought she had. Um, as a fighter, she had. Uh, what do you call it? Oh, action surge, but she doesn't have it. Mm. Okay. Oh, hey. So that's her turn, and it's sept again. <laughs> hey, I just look at this man. And I, as you can probably guess, do the same thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Make a dirty save. And it's going to be a natural 20. Ooh, 12 almost. misses, right? Or is he, is he dead? That's a, that's, <laughs> that's a fail. That's a fail. Uh, 29 like to have it. Wow. Set, man. Tell us how you just neutralize this guy into nothing. Oh, he didn't even get an attack. Yeah, I just start electrifying. It seems like these sparks come up with a figure. As I electrify this man, as I like move closer, and right when I get up into his face, I just like grab him by the face and just make his head explode. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So yeah, this you guys standing around, you just see this electrical light show, like it's a freaking Def Leppard concert, and he just grabs a hold of this guy. He just can Inverna quickly get her hat and put it cover her face with the hat? <laughs> <laughs> Flashback. Yeah. Yeah, I'd imagine she could do that. I just look towards the party. 
And I was like, whoa. Yeah. What the fuck? I guess that altar they put down there just makes it a completely OP fight, man. Sweet. I, I don't know if they, like, allocated if they meant for, like, the bad guy to, like, escape to the altar room where they, like, supercharged himself, but... No, I don't think that that's how it was intended at all. Um, I think <laughs> I think you guys were definitely intended to come into the altar room and get that supercharged, but, uh, yeah, I just... Let me look at that spell one more time. It's just an initiative, isn't it? Uh, he, he just he didn't get a chance to go first, so Cast the spell. it's just bad rolls, isn't it? 8d6. Yeah, it's 8d6. All right. Yeah. Oh, a um, really strong spell. Yeah. So let's uh, see. What else is in? Can I have a look to see what else is in the room apart from the shell? Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's see. All right. Let me just let me just read this little bit here. So you guys are basically just mortified at your new god sept and uh <laughs> and yet yeah, obviously you know you'd already seen that he had that shell and it's uh it's it's sitting on the under the on the chair underneath of his half crisp body and blood splattered all over the place and let's see what else is in here mm. That's all you guys see in here. Okay, I, I suppose we take the shell, and I said to the guys, "Do we want to check out upstairs to see if there's any treasure upstairs?" Or yes, yes the treasure's got to be somewhere because it must be hoarding it somewhere. Of course, my high elven friend. <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right, so you uh, you guys pick up that uh, the conch shell. Yeah, yeah, we get the shell. Except. Uh... Takes the shell, just put it into his pocket. All right. And anybody looking at Sept, you notice that his eyes are still sizzling with lightning, though maybe not quite as uh, blue as they were before, but they're still just like... Fucking Raiden from Mortal Kombat. Tundras. <laughs> Each Tundras. session, Sept is because more and more fucking evil. Tundra Sept, you may that. take the lead. Alright. You should have gone for the head. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it <you> now. <laughs> Alright. This is like my second PC that just like it slowly descended into darkness. <laughs> Third, maybe. Depending on how you look at it. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm. Alright, so what'd you say you guys were doing? Going we're up the spiral? Yes. Okay. And upstairs. All right, so when you go upstairs, you're going to have to move your attention a bit to the right. So we're going to do like a pop-out thing. And I'm just going to oh. reveal this whole thing over here rather than do it bit by bit. Boop. So where is that? So yeah, you get up to the top and uh, let's see here. So that's the staircase. Oh, sorry. I'm in the wrong place. I was I was going left. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. Like over area. on the right area. The other right. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys get up here, and uh, it's very clearly like a, a rooftop of the um, of the lighthouse, and from this vantage point, uh, you can see sh the shattered mass of all the ships that have been wrecked. So I'll just go ahead and open up that whole thing over there as well. Uh, oh yeah, let me get rid of this thing here. Returns. Clear. So, oh, one second is that? Okay, it's not right. Um, and yeah, as you as you're kind of looking out, you can see you know all these shipwrecks over here, and you know you can see some uh, shadows in the water of what are presumably sharks swimming about. Oh, baby, there's so much treasure down there. Yeah, you can forgot see... What, uh, I forgot what she's called. Can we search this area before we go up? Uh, the, uh, the downstairs? I mean, this, yeah, this area here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because um, there's some more steps leading up. Yeah, so basically, the spiral stairs that you saw over here were um, led up, into the, uh, up onto the rooftop here. And... Uh, yeah, so like I was saying, as, as um, you when you when you're up here, you can very clearly from this vantage point, you can see all the ship wreckage, 
and you can see you know little traces of uh, uh, shark shadows in the water swimming about and you can see like all around the rooftop there is a like a one foot high stone wall so it's you know very short but atop of that there's a there's an iron railing that goes all around the top and there's a there's a similar railing that circles the walkway of the lighthouse um, beacon which you can very clearly see shining very brightly um, but one of the prominent figures that you see in this part is down here where I'm kind of pinging. You can see that this is a, is a lightning rod. And, oh, it's a rod. Yeah, and this is, you can, without making any kind of roll, you can tell that the part of the rooftop that you're standing on is directly above the altar. So this lightning rod goes down through the floor into the ceiling of the room below and then splits off and goes into that altar. But there's nothing else on this floor. Uh, one second. Apart from this rod. Oh, those are belts, right? Uh, what's that? Those are the, like, notes. Um, nothing of note. The, the only thing that really catches your attention up here is that lightning rod and the fact that you can now very clearly see out into the water. Other than that, um, just the 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 light uh, the the stairwell continues to go upward from there. Okay, upstairs time. Right. Upwards and upwards. Back up the stairs. Okay, they don't have a roll table for that. That's weird. All right, so yep, you uh, explore that area and nothing really catches your eye. So you continue to climb the stairs, and when you get to the very tippy tippy top, um, you see this area over here. Mm, what? So... Some sort of green beacon. Yeah, so... Green magical beacon. So you're at the, the pinnacle of Lighthouse at this point, and the beacon, it's, it's partially open to the elements but it's surrounded by this narrow walkway and topped off by an iron railing. And um, there's these three open archways that allow the, the beacon to pulsate its green light uh, westward. And this light is just crazy bright, especially for you, Xander. Like, you've never seen anything this bright in your light, in your life. Like, you'd rather stare into the sun than look at this thing. Ah, fucking... I'm just oh, looking no. away from it. Can I... Do I understand what this is? Like... Um, or, well, I'm gonna cast Detect Magic as ritual. Yeah, I'm guessing this thing is, like, clearly magical, right? Uh, hang on. Let me figure out how I'm gonna read this part, or handle this part here, so... Um... I mean, one thing you can tell... Is that there? There's this over enlarged beating heart that's uh, floating and literally, literally floating in the air, five feet roughly, about off the off the floor. You can tell, you know, somewhere probably around your eye level, uh, you can see this oversized heart that's like the size of a human body, practically just just beating. And who is that? And it, but it's really, really hard to look at this thing because th the light is like frying out your retinas, blinding as you as you look at this thing. I got a quick question. Sorry. Like I would just want, like I would even say that like you have to practically put your arm over your face, and you can like look at it for like less than one second before having to like shield your eyes because your eyes are just hurting so much. Sorry, I got a bit quick question. Um, you know, um, it's got detect magic. Would you know what that shell was? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, because it's within. Um, it, yeah, as I cast this, okay, what like sort of magic is this? Yeah, let me see here. If that shell is magical, because. Or anything with is it thirty feet? 
Yeah, that's 30 feet, isn't it? Magic within 30 feet of you. If you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see it. I mean, it would have to be magical, right? Mm. So I'm going to say, you know, there's the shell. Uh, I mean, you, you you recognize it as uh, as as containing some sort of essence of a creature or something along those lines. But I mean, honestly, as far as whether or not it's specifically magical, I, I can't tell you. I'm not smart enough to figure that out on the fly. Mm. And this uh, beating heart that you see in here same thing it's it doesn't strike you as necessarily um it's certainly odd very strange do i uh let me look let me look for my other spells i've prepared hold on well i have identify but i can't use that to go up the pearl all right, here we go. Uh, okay, so here's what you know. You can tell that this heart um, has been magically enlarged. You can certainly tell that. And um, you can also know that it is literally ten times larger than what it was ever intended to be. You know that... Um, you can also tell that you can't move it. Like, no matter what you guys were to do to it, it's, like, magically locked into place. Um, it is beating. And you also notice that that beacon, that green beacon that you guys have been seeing all the way since you were coming into this place way up on the cliff, every time the heart beats, that light pulses. So, like, thump, thump, and the light I, is in time. Do I get, the, like, the sense that this is, like, necrotic... Like necromancy in origin, or... I would say... Transmutation? You get the sense that it is uh, psychic. Psychics. Does this, like, feel evil in any way, or just strange? Um, it feels uh, connected in some way uh, with with um M molesco moesco i just look at the part and say so you guys should fry it I'm fuck it say, yes do it now wait 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 i got i, I got an idea I, hopefully you hear me out you know we we, we haven't found the treasure right and the treasure is still going to be in the shipwreck and we gotta get to that shipwreck, and we got that darn shark. Could you use your lightning power to take out, fry the shark? Because as oh. a conductor, that we can fry the shark out, and then if we take care of the shark, we can have free reign to loot the shipwreck. I'm gonna throw you guys one more bit of information because I feel like I boned some of this um, when you were down there with Moesco. And after Sep just incinerated the guy, when he slumped over, I'm going to say you would have noticed in, in your inspections and looking around the room, because I do remember, uh, I think it was Oz, you specifically mentioned that you were trying to inspect the room. And I'm going to say that when you were looking about, you noticed that Moesco, um, his armor, a after having been sliced open like a can opener, under his chest, there was just a gigantic hole in his chest. And where you would normally see like a person's sternum in the heart below it. It was just a hole. Oh, okay. I feel like, I feel like I should have given you that already. So that's why I'm giving it to you now. Cause there's a connection, obviously. Okay. Let me, let me try something. Let me try and do a fireball at this heart. Or do we want to try this after we try to oh. loot? I feel that it wouldn't matter if we try to like take on the shark because I don't think I'll be able to kill the thing with just one shot of my light in. It took kill it took two to take out a man. Not sure how much it will take to take out a sh big killer shark. Okay. So you wanna use that on the speaker? Do do we wanna stand oh. back while you do this? 
Yeah, that's what I suggest. Everybody get behind me. Go on, uh, in when it down, down. Oh, do it quick. Um, yeah. Do. Come on, come on, Zendo. Duck. All right. I'm going to spit trip. into my hand, <laughs> rub my hands together. We go just, just into uh, the uh, floor level. It is aim. It is blast this thing. The final charge of the lightning. Right. How am I going to make a saving throw on this thing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess I'll just use Moesco saving throw. That would make sense. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. All right, 29 light damage. Yep, uh, so that's way more than it took to take out this heart. So um, so here's what happens. As you, uh, as you, as you aim at this heart, um, as soon as like your eyes make contact with it, you're blinded. Like you just immediately, you can't see crap. Oh, however, I made a mistake. <laughs> However, Raiders. you were still able to get out that last lightning shot and it hits this heart and this heart just literally explodes and just turns into nothing. There is no trace behind. It's like it was never there. Is it done? Please say it's done. Uh, does the light disperse? The, uh, the light disperses, yes. All right. I think I am I literally blind, or was I only blind for like a second? You're literally blind for about some period of time. <laughs> oh, um, oh. I, f I hope I uh, handled that right, because it's like it's fine. You know, I get constant consequences for my actions. No, the blinding yeah, thing not... is fine. Yeah, that that's defo. But uh, I just I'm just trying to make sure I just handled all the bits and pieces yeah. there right. Because I'm not like. It would be a little bit like easier if you guys were physically attacking it. I'd, I'd have a better idea of what to do, but at any rate, I, I feel like you definitely, that that lightning thing would have no trouble at all. Um, but yeah, so like I said, as you, you know, as you look around the room and you bring your attention directly into this heart pulsating light beacon, you let out your lightning blast, but the time that it takes to do that you're staring at such a bright light that you are like, it's it's literally like staring into the sun and then looking away, you know, how you can't see anything for a while. So you're just like, everything is just completely black and dark because you're, you know, your pupils have uh, contracted down to this point where they're like a single pixel and there's no light that can get into your eyes at the time being. And all the rest yeah. of you that are on the stairwell, you just see suddenly this, this place that was just, just ungodly bright is now just pitch black. Whoa. All right. Oh, I, you did I say, I, I think I got it, guys, as I'm not here, like, facing them. Although, I think there might be a slight side effect. Uh-huh, what would that be? As I'm, like, walking around, not even paying attention. Uh, <laughs> I, I try to, like, fill around for Xandro, but I'm, like, walking in the wrong direction. <laughs> He's literally become a mummy. I mean, I'm... Um, um, Guys! That? Where, where are you going? Egyptian mummy. <laughs> uh, oh, no. We're over this here. Is, oh, this, this is not a... Don't good... move. You're going to fall down the stairs. I'm going to well. cast... Um, what's it called? Dancing lights. I'm going to cast dancing lights up here. I'll be like, is that any better? Uh, I still can't see for shit. Oh fuck! Um, oh, if only I prepared Lester Restoration that I could fix myself, but I don't have it. <laughs> so as you're uh, wandering around aimlessly and can't tell, you know, which way's up and which way's down, about a minute passes, and you start noticing uh, that your eyes don't ache as much, and you can just make out the faintest traces of uh, of things around you like it feel again it's kind of like that analogy of you know staring into the sun um you know right, kind of yeah. yeah after a I minute or so the the you know like as you like move your eyes and you're blinking you can still see this crazy green light flashing around all right uh, i'm gonna see okay, guys. A value in the room because it's too bright to look earlier so I'm... okay guys I, I i think my eyesight's coming back 
fossil orb. Cool. Um, let me see what we got here. Do I have to roll in for anything? Or... Um... Like, imagine, like, Xandril tried doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. It's like fucking permanently blind. I'd be fucking turned to dust. <laughs> like, like a vampire. Like staring into like the face of God or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't require any rolls or anything in this particular room. It's very small and there aren't any nooks and crannies. You can tell there's nothing in this room other than what used to be this blinding light in the in the heart and the heart is literally gone there there isn't any dust there isn't any uh blood splatter it's just gone it's like it got sucked into another dimension okay can can we see the sharks from here um now that the light is gone oh. it's extremely difficult to see anything the water is so murky and dark that uh, like even if you have dark vision um, it'd be pretty hard to penetrate the the water at this point well there's only one way to find out where this treasure is it's gotta be in the in those uh, well, wreckage because uh, there doesn't seem to be anything else here well let's go have a chat with her banshee friend Okay, do you want, we want oh, to do yeah. that before we do that? Um, out of character, it's starting to get to like the four and a half hour mark, so... Yeah, I was actually just going to say um, I would like to close it here and we'll pick up next week. Because um, yeah. I feel like, you know, having taken out that heart, that's a pretty decent stopping point. Yeah, uh, I meant as in like in the character, like the, would the characters want to do that before? Before they search for the treasure, or do we want to search for the treasure? She might help us, or at least give us something. Mm. Which might be a bitch and give us nothing, who knows? <laughs> Th that's what I'm worried about, she might just... Because um, she's saying she's giving us permission to go past if we were going to get the shell. I mean, she Honestly, might she we, might we're not losing out on anything if she doesn't. And I, I and I would say, like as as a don't forget kind of thing, um, not to tip my hat too much, but the crab did promise you if you helped get rid of her or if you help revive her spirit or whatever it was that he would get you something. Yeah, I think your characters got, would remember that, so that's why I'm just giving you that yeah. reminder. And we got yeah, the that's... water breathing one, if uh, but it's too risky with sharks in there. All right, so we will uh, end it here, and we, 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 next we time decide. we resume, we'll find out what our fearless heroes decide to do, if they're going to go free the Banshee's soul, or if they're going to go face the sharks. Do, do, do. Dun, dun, dun. And nobody levels up this time, but you did last time. Oh, right. that's fine. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the recording here. Uh, right. Anybody that's Bye. made it through our video, I know there's a couple people that have been watching these because I get the comments on the YouTube, and they're like, they appreciate uh -huh. following along with the game as we're going. So, uh, to that one or two people, <laughs> thank you hey, for watching. You so You're my favorite one or two people in the entire world. <laughs> I can tolerate my horrible commentary voice. <laughs> <laughs>